so Jason Street, one of my favorite hackers at DEF CON, truthfully, like, I love you very much. Well, because you. you talk so much about like the, 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 the core of a hacker. Like, and the question I want to ask you is actually a simple one, which is, right. but it's a really hard one to answer because I've gotten like 15 different answers, which is, what is a hacker? That, that is a very, you know, one of those questions. It's like a lot of people have, and a lot of people have different variations of it, and it requires certain things. One of the key things that I think about when I, when I talk about hacking and what hacking is and what a hacker is, is first of all, it's like a couple of misconceptions. It's like one, hacking has nothing to do with computers. Hacking is, regardless of a computer or any technology, hacking doesn't have to require that. It's like, it is literally everyone on this planet was born a hacker. We were all born hackers. And the reason why I say that is spend more than an hour around a three-year-old. And what are they going to do? Why? Why is the sky blue like that? Why does that person look like that? Why is there a uh, castle in, the, in those clouds right there? And can we go visit it? How can we do that? Can we build a rocket ship? I've got this cardboard rocket ship. It's like, that's going to take us to the moon. Let's do it and see what else do we need to go. I need snacks. It's like all that kind of curiosity, innovation, and imagination, that's hacking. That is literally the distilled essence of hacker. But then institutionalized education and peer pressure and family grinding you down into your little boxes, a lot of people lose that imagination and curiosity and innovation that they had at three years old. But the ones that were able to retain it, the ones that were able to keep it going and keep asking why, they're hackers. Leonardo da Vinci, hacker. Mm -hmm. Tesla, hacker. Ada Lovelace, hacker. Hedley Lamar, one of the worst insults you can give that lady is calling her an actress first and not a hacker first. Mm -hmm. It's like, because you cannot, you, it, is a, it should be a crime to categorize her by her looks and how she can recite a line versus the fact that she's the reason why we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi today. It's like that she helped the Americans with their submarine technology and torpedo technology and RF signals and stuff back during the World War II, and they want to just classify her as an actress. It's like she was a pretty face. But no, it's like that was a really pretty good brain of a hacker that was doing these things. Well, hold on, I wanna, I wanna pull back because there's something you said, all good points, but there's something you said which is, you start off as a kid and you're curious, and you're always right. thinking about things, and you always think, and you say like, family, institutional knowledge, things like that. The way I'm hearing that is like, in some ways, I hear it as like imposter syndrome or something right. like that, or like any other word, which is, I started off being curious, right. and I ask my parents why, 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 and they give me an answer, and at a certain point, I stop asking why, right. and I start saying, or like, I stop worrying about asking questions. Right. And I think one of the reasons why is because you might come across like an idiot. Like I would go, I can't right. ask about this because then it shows I don't know it. Right. And I think one of the pieces of, of hacking is being able to have that mentality of like, I don't know this answer. I'm comfortable asking the why question because it shows I don't know it. But right. like, I don't know, like one of the most exciting things for me, especially at DEF CON in this community is, Meeting someone who's, again, this is going to sound so arrogant, like smarter than you, but like I love being wrong. I right. love being wrong and asking someone, finding that that the thing they're passionate about right. and having them just go off on it. Right. But what did you mean when you said like the you lose that like with family and things like that? Am I am I right on that? Society likes to likes us in boxes. It's like we are supposed to be pre-programmed and like in a box. It's like this is what you're supposed to, and. Anyone who is outside that norm is instantly picked on in school, is instantly the oddball, the weirdo, the freak, the nerd. It's like who has a different kind of passion that they're not supposed to have because it's not what everybody else has. It's like it's that. It's that individualism and stuff, you know, that is like their core spirit of like, no, I want to do these things and I want to try to do this. It's like, that is what society tends to like be upset about. This whole conference is filled with nothing but societal rejects. Mm -hmm. It's like ones that were not, are not, you know, conforming to society's norms of what they're supposed to be. 
It's like who are living because this is how they want to exist, and they're not going to take society's answers and stuff, you know, for, uh, as gospel. And it's like, and that's the thing. It's like, but throughout the years, it's like, as you get it, you get tired of being the odd one out. You don't want to be unpopular. You don't want people to constantly be looking at you like you're weird or, you know, you get those looks. It's like, and it gets tougher. And so you eventually, and, and for a lot of people, especially when they're younger and going through high school, and it's like, and you get these clicks of people with like, you know, they want to put you in those groups. It's like the jocks, the goths, the preps. It's like, you know, uh, all the different, all that is another way of making sure that you're conforming to a standardized norm. It's like, and even like in the nerd group, but hacking is not about that. Hacking is about saying, I just want to explore. I just want to experience. And so to me, that is basically 200 years ago, you call us artists and, and inventors and creators. It's like, and now because of the modern age and because so much is do, being done with computers, yes, a lot of hackers have been uh, drawn toward computers as a way to express their um, curiosity and their innovation and imagination. But you also have just as many food hackers out there, biohackers, uh, people who are creating kinetic different sculptures that are not like, all those people are hackers. It's like, and it's, it's just the wording is different. It's like, and so over society, what they've done, which is what they've done through a lot through history, you know, ask Michelangelo, is they try to stigmatize and ostracize those thinkers and those free thinkers and those inventors to say, we don't think you're right. We was like, I, that's criminal. It's like, you're doing something, you're knowing arcane secrets. It's like, you're, you know, you're, that's what they, we equate now mostly like hackers with criminals now. And that's one of the things that gets me the most is if I get robbed by a guy with a gun, do I automatically assume they're an NRA member? Do I automatically assume that they're a second rights amendment activist or a gunsmith who created that gun and then actually, you know, packed the bullets? No, they're a criminal committing a crime with a tool. It's like computers, just like hackers are using it for exploring and their imagination and curiosity, criminals are using computers because it's very easy to commit crimes with. It's like most of them are going to YouTube videos, tutorials on how to launch the programs or actually having support and stuff, you know, trying to figure out how to work these things and they're committing crime. It's like, that doesn't make them a hacker. It makes them a criminal using a tool. It's like hackers have nothing to do with that. It's like, and, and there are some criminals that are hackers. There's some gunsmiths that are like, you know, in arms trade. It's like, so it, it's not an absolute. But the majority of hackers, it's like, are the ones that are curious. They're the ones that are finding no hacker has ever created a vulnerability in another software program of someone else's. Never. What they've done is they discovered the flaw that was already there. And unlike the criminals, they have the decency and the honesty to report it and announce it and make sure it tries to get fixed. Criminals aren't talking about zero days or anything like that. Those are all words and verbiage being used by hackers to make sure it's getting fixed. It's like, and getting the problem resolved. It's like the criminals are making money off of it. Well, I'd also say that the criminals are gonna take any vulnerability regardless of what system it's in and yes. it's, it's gonna get hoarded because it's not gonna be shared because if you share it, it's kind of like, Dropping a zero day at DEF CON, it's silly to do that exactly. because like, if the, you're going to hoard that to be able to make money off of it. Exactly. Something you said in, earlier, though, that's interesting to me, is you said like, things like you know, Da Vinci being ostracized. Right. And I think you hear those stories, and I think it's harder now in some ways because the outbound thinkers or the people outside the box could do that in a, in a little bit of a silo over here, and the ostracization was mo much more when they became... He, uh, bro, I think now it's very easy to get ostracized earlier, like in elementary, middle school, and you go, okay, I'm gonna, 
I, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to I'm going to stop that sooner, where they right. never get to stretch that creative muscle. Right. And I can't help but ask the question. It's like, what's what's the fix for that? Like, what what what's the the, the thing you can do? Like, to, I would say help that. Right. What can we do? Well, I think one of the best things is, um, I think it is getting better because, and it has nothing to do with a societal change, it's a generational change. It's like, because I'm Gen X and stuff, you know, so my parents are boomers, so that means it was hell. And it's like, and that was like, they were all about, you were in the cookie cutter, this is where you go. It's like, but a lot of Gen Xers are raising their kids, like, you do you, you learn you, you experience what you wanna be. And so that's the reason why I have so much hope for uh, not just the millennials, but like the Generation Z and stuff, you know, because they're becoming more active, they're becoming more inclusive, they're becoming understanding that they can be who they want to be. And they're not, and that's the reason why a lot of politicians and a lot of people are really upset with that all over the world, because they're saying enough of this, this is who we are. It, it's interesting because one of the, the things you're me mentioning is this, this idea of, well, I'm gonna say, fa designing factory workers. You know, yeah. nine to five, this is like, this is the expectation. And a lot of that comes from, we'll say, outside knowledge pushing down. Like, yeah. here is the thought process, here's how you have to understand yeah. it. Where it almost sounds like the shift is, you're having an idea, let's explore that idea in less of a, hey, let's cut off that idea, you're going down, the, like, get, stopping the rabbit trails. Right. And saying, okay, because in finding that balance of saying, no, it's, it's okay to go down these rabbit trails. It's okay to go down these other places. And helping yeah. the individual process those things right. as, a, as opposed to saying, this is the right way. Well, it's also the point where it's like a generation ago to even raise the question that there might be an alternate path was ostracizing you. True. Okay, just acknowledging that there might be a different way it's like, I mean, look back what happened in the 60s. Just literally just saying that it's like, I want to believe you could be a commie during the Red Square uh, scare. It's like you were out there. It's like you, that is what's changing the very thing. We're now getting to the point where we're actually willing to tolerate that there might be a different way of doing this. There may, this is the way that we've always done it is one of the worst things that anyone in any society could ever say because it was the, all, the way we all always done it. It's like, it's like and, that, and when you say that and you accept that, you deny yourself any change for the better. So do you believe hacking is legitimately, this is the, this is the expected path in anything that deviates from that? Meaning like uh, using anything in a way it wasn't intended to be used, right. whether it's a thought process, a w using art. I think actually it was funny, I found, I'm not sure, there was a definition of hacking within furniture making, right. which was one of the ways the term, I, it's not, I believe, developed was hacking a piece of furniture was legitimately taking chains and beating it to give it a weathered look, which right. was unique to a way, which wasn't like a normal way of seeing it. Right. I think later it was adopted by like MIT to yeah. let's hack it together, right. not a let's break in or something like that, but like let's just hack it together. Exactly. And it's interesting because if I think about both of the, the furniture making where it's like, like I'm gonna beat it with chains to give it a unique look, that's not the normal way you do it. Right. And then we even now get into like, you know, furniture making where they're using acid wash and things like right. that, which is not typical, but it becomes right. typical. Right. And, and I mean, and that's the whole point. It's like, once again, it's like when we go and look at something and we look at the process and we say, it's like, it's when we, like I said, it was like we always do this. The hacker is going to say, okay, yeah, we may have always done it this way, but there's a couple of other ways that we can try as well. And the key thing is, we can fail at them and learn from those failures and try to do something else. The Wright brothers did not fly at Kitty Hawk. It's like, and we're like, oh, success. No, they crashed and burned. It's like a lot. It's like they kept going and they kept learning from the failures. It's like NASA and the astronaut program. 
that resulted in death, but they kept going and learning and adapting. It's like till they got to the moon. It's like, so the whole point is to say, um, when you're looking at hacking is you're looking not just to find a solution to find a solution. Sometimes you look at a problem and you, or you look at a solution and you realize maybe you were trying to solve the wrong problem. Maybe we should be looking at this problem and then coming up with a different kind of solution so it doesn't add to other problems down the line. Being able to think beyond that one kind of step, to stop going and saying step A leads to step B when you're saying, can we shortcut to E? And it's like, and then come back to B if we need to. That process is hacking. What do you think separates the word innovation from hacking? Where innovation is often used, we'll say in, in, in this industry, like chief innovation officer or something like that, where their job is to come up with creative solutions, hear the problems. Is that part of hacking or is, the ha is hacking part of innovation it's or is innovation? Synonym. It's a synonym. Oh, okay. It's literally a synonym. It's the same thing. It's like, it, like I was saying, it's like we get so hung up on words, it's like, and trying to gather the meaning of them instead of understanding of what they're about. It's like, and that is, because in human, it's just human nature. We have to label. We have to categorize to make safe. It's like uh, people, um, what people don't know, they fear. What they fear, they try to destroy. That's why you look at hacker, uh, hackers getting sentenced for crimes, it's like that are 10 times worse than murderers. It's like in rapist. It's like, and it just involved a computer because that is what's unknown. It's like, it scares people and they're like, oh, we gotta go after this. This is like, they were in, into the interwebs and they were like cruising. They just don't understand it. It's like, so it has to be defined and in a box and made under, small enough for people to understand and be comfortable with. And hackers are very, very bad at fitting in boxes. Mm -hmm. And that's why society has a problem with hackers. It's like, they need hackers. It's, it is necessary for a functioning society to have hackers, to keep innovating, to keep imagining solutions for problems. It's like, that is, requires the work of a hacker. It doesn't matter what field they're in or what title or label you want to get them to make yourself feel comfortable with hiring them and having them employed by you, but that's hacking. That is like coming up and finding a solution for a problem and also sometimes coming up with problems is like based on other people's solutions. It's like, it's like in figuring out like, oh, they want to solve this, but if they solve it this way, it's going to lead to this problem over here because then I can do something with this. That sounds bad, but no, that sounds great because then you can prepare for it. And in case it does happen, you've got an answer and you've got a solution. That's one of the things I think people don't understand. They get so caught up in the concept of hacking has to do with computers. Hacking is all about being, I gotta know how to program. I don't program. I, I literally have sitting on my desk um, uh, learning how to code with Python for kids. And I got through chapter three, I can do hello world with the print things most of the time, right? It's like, so I'm having a little problem with integers and stuff like that right now. It's like, does that make me less of a hacker? It's like, I look at people and, I, and I'm amazed because I feel like, guys, I can't, I mean, I, it's been so long since I've done a SQL injection, I probably wouldn't be able to do a very good one right now. I wouldn't probably be able to, but you know what I can do? I can walk into a server room and take uh, your SQL server out with me because I've done that on an engagement. I didn't know how to program. I didn't know how to drop the, the, the database with a SQL command. I just walked out with your whole database. It's like, it's still hacking. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the funny thing is you keep talking about DEF CON as like, we'll say the land of misfit toys. Yeah. Like, I think that's the title. It's the land of misfit toys. Yet it's, it's interesting because how do you feel community plays a role in this? Because we're all outcasts in the sense of- like, That is the whole point. We are like, and this is one of the things I've said before in one of my talks, is one of the things I love about DEF CON is that we're all, special snowflakes in the special snowflake blizzard. 
It's like we're all these people that are individuals and we're like, I'm not like anybody else, just like everybody else here. It's like, and it's like, and we fit in. And it's like, and the reason why we fit in is because I'm here because they accept my weirdness. So of course I accept your weirdness. And it's like, and I don't have to agree with your weirdness. It's like to actually say you belong here. And I'm actually going to give a, uh, a keynote for the uh, DEF CON groups uh, uh, community. And one of the things I'm gonna to talk to them about is ethnicity. It's like, and the reason, and I, it's a long circular thing, but I'll, I'll share it here uh, because it's just the way my brain works. It's like, but I'm one of those people that always look at concepts, especially in society and human nature, because I'm on the spectrum and normal people scare me. It's like, just like normal human nature. It's like, it's very foreign to me, like legitimately. And so I've, since I was little, I've had to study people and how they operate and why they do things the way they do to the point where sometimes I know why they're doing it before they understand why they're doing it. And so one of the things that I did when I started doing reader is I realized race is a made up construct you know, to make Europeans feel better about owning other people. It's like, and that was brought over. And it's such a, just a horrible place, not because of all the problems that it causes, because it so narrows us down. Mm -hmm. And so I was having a conversation once, and this was uh, with a, my neighbor, uh, who is like a very staunch Republican, and it's like, and, and I, I have different views and stuff. It's like, I think Democrats are too liberal sometimes. It's like, and so, but he was a very good person. It's like, he's a very nice neighbor. When some other people knocked my mailbox down because I had a hate has no home here flag in our yard, how horrible of me. I, I know, hate has no home. C clearly someone has to, like, I'm yeah, They were very upset about that. And it's like, and it, this was in 2020. And it's like, and so they knocked my, but it was my neighbor, the Republican neighbor who put that mailbox back on before I even knew it was taken down. Mm -hmm. It's like, so uh, I was having a conversation and I was trying to explain to him. It's like, okay, let me put it this way, okay? You're a white guy in America, right? It's like, and you're comfortable with that. He's like, yeah, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So you're just like an Ivy League uh, professor in Boston or a uh, gay movie producer in Los Angeles. Y'all are all the same. It's like, I can lump all, well, hold on now. It's like, no, I'm a little bit, what are you talking about? It's like, oh, because you're just using your race as to identify you, and that's your mistake. It's like ethnicity gives us who we are. It's like, and there's three subgroups. There's like two subgroups and the main group. Your locational, your geographical ethnicity, meaning I'm from Houston, Texas. So that means I know how to say the word Kirkendall on the street. And if you see what the word, the street, Kirkendall looks like, it does not look like it sounds like Kirkendall, but that is how you say it. It's like, I know different jokes and stuff, you know, about uh, people that we say in, in Texas against Austin or Aggies or whatever. It's like, because that's a geographical ethnicity. That's how I identify as South Texan. It's like, so that means if I'm in London or Japan and I see someone wearing a Texas shirt, oh, you're part of my tribe. It's like we come from the same city or the same area. I identify with you. It's like you're part of my ethnic group. It's like, and you may not look like me at all. You may not like believe like I do, but we have something shared. It's like of that ethnicity. And then you have your cultural ethnicity. And we tie that in a lot to our politics. So it's like if you're more conservative, you have more of a conservative. So that means if you saw a candidate in a different area, in a different part of the country or the world, and you see someone voting for this guy, it's like, the, oh, I vote for that. Oh, we share something. Oh, you come from California, but hey, we got this in common. This is our ethnicity. So those two ethnicities are our sub-ethnicities. It's like, so that means we can find sort of common ground, but not really close common ground with someone, even if it's tangible. It's like our third one is our primary ethnicity and that's our identif uh, identifier. It's like, and it's very simple, I'm a hacker. That's my tribe. My friend, it's like my neighbor, his ethnicity was South Texan, so we shared one, very conservative, so we weren't there, and he loved being in the outdoors. 
He loved being in a boating and like, you know, being out in the woods. So that means if you see someone else that doesn't look like you and they don't vote like you, but if they needed help or if they were looking there and they were having a conversation, you would instantly be friends with them, wouldn't you? And he's like, yeah, it's like I'd share a boat with them. Exactly, because that's your tribe. That's what your tribe is. That is the reason why when I travel, it's like I don't care what invisible lines on a map dictate who my friends are or not supposed to be. It's like you're part of my tribe. I don't like everybody in my tribe. There are people in, the, in, in my tribe and stuff, you know, some people here that I'm not very fond of. And there are some people here that are definitely not very fond of me. That's okay. I'm not going to deny that they're in my tribe, though. It's like they're still in my tribe, just like in my family. It's like, and, and for some people, this is like family. It's like I disown my real family. This is closest to the family I actually have, is the people and the friends in here that I have here at DEF CON. And so that's the key thing, is that when you're here at DEF CON, it's like you're among your tribe. It's like, and that's what this is. It's like some people are more about the wireless hacking or social engineering or hardware hacking or car hacking or biohacking but we're all in the same tribe. We're all under the yeah. same tent. It's, it's funny when you talk about this because like there's, I have this theory which is like a chunk of DEF CON, I don't know what percentage, I'm making it up, 90%. I would say a chunk of them is this is an information security right. conference. That's what it is. It's, it's here, it's for me to you know, get my CPE credits for my certification yeah. and, and that's, that's what totally it is. Okay. And that's to yeah, it's totally okay. But then you have, again, like not, all hackers, but you have this, this piece of them who, who get that feeling, who go, this is my family. Once yeah. a year, you have, I have friends and everything like that. This is my DEF CON family. Yeah. This is my DEF CON friends. These are the people I connect with. Yeah. And it's interesting because you go, you can immediately walk up to any of them. And you don't have to know them or anything like right. that, but you know there's, there's some underlying connection there, which is that, that Oh gosh, it's it's that ind it's indescribable because it's this piece of like, I, I we're passionate about something. Maybe that's it. There's like there's a spark of like, I have to talk to someone within a minute, and you hear them, you hit their passion, whatever that is. Right. It could be coffee making, and they're like immediately they're like coffee making. They immediately they're geeking out on it and going like Ethiopian Yirgashev at this location yeah. is so good. It's a, exactly. this altitude of this. And you're sitting there going, I, I don't know about any of this. And I, in some ways I go, I care about coffee now as much as them. But you, you hear that passion coming you from appreciate them. appreciate that they love it. It's like you may not love it, but you still have that appreciation because you know that it brings them joy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I totally get and that. It, and it feels like that passion is always sparked by some sort of curiosity. It's yeah. funny because you talk to so many people here they have the weirdest hobbies. Yes. And, they, and you see these weird overlaps. Like there's like weird ones, like would say like, uh, like magic, like is a weird one which right. a lot of us have in common. Yes. We have coffee, which is kind of another one is given. But then you have like goofy ones like farming. Right. Which is so crazy to me. Yeah. Like which you have people like who own farms. They go, I technical, all of that. And then you get like, knitting and other ones and then there's like a oh, defcon yeah. knitting group which is nuts yes. to me it's awesome and then I, i'm gonna say knitting and they're like it's actually we have a crocheting group crocheting and then knitting. a knitting run yeah. i'm sorry mix those two groups yeah. together they got but, needles be careful they, 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 they can hurt you it's like. <laughs> and it's so cool to see these these uh communities but what's interesting about the communities at defcon is they're they're not the same as like we'll say high school where it's like this is the jocks Right. This is this, where it's, we're trying, as you say, no label it. Cooler than the other. Mm. We're just, you can be in a clique, it's like, and you're still accepted. It's like, it's not, it doesn't make you more special. We're all just, we just understand we all have our different passions. And it's, it's funny because I, said, I refer to it, let's say, the 10%. Of, of this this con where it's like they're they're the DEFCON fanboys, but they don't. It's like DEFCON's cool, right. and it's great about DEFCON. And I care about the, the we'll say the big D DEFCON right. like company. We'll say, but then there's like the DEFCON this group, right. which is the DEFCON fanboys, right. and like. You go into you go into the offices, and I've seen pictures of your office where it's like DEF CONs yeah. everywhere, exactly. and it's not because of like oh the corporate side. It's it's because this is you found your family. I found my, and I will tell people it's like uh, people back in the day used to call me a DEF CON fanboy 
to insult me. And it's so hilarious because I owned it. It's like, yes, it's like, I found my home. It's like, yes, it's like, yes, I'm a DEF CON fanboy. It's like DEF CON, and to, there's been times where DEF CON's disappointed me. It's like, there's times where it's like, I've had, but it's always my home. It's like, and I came to DEF CON 19 years ago. I've not missed a DEF CON in 19 years. And it's like, I tell you, my first DEF CON, I was an idiot. It's like, I did not DEF CON, right? I was like, I was so wrapped up in what I thought it was supposed to be and, and, and just all my preconceptions. And I was too busy just taking selfies with everybody and just not really listening and engaging conversations and trying to do something, trying to be all that. And I totally ruined it, made a lousy first impression, but like a good tribe, they're like, yeah, you were a little over the top. It's like, and it's like, cause it was like my hyper-focus and the way that I'm, it's like, that's the problem when you get someone on the spectrum. It's like when they hyper-focus and get something, they go overboard and that's what I did. And it's like, in DEF CON 13, I, I did a little bit better. And by 14, I started understanding and started what I needed to do because it, it's not just about what you're taking from DEF CON. It's what you're giving back as well. It's like in what you're exchanging and what you're trying to, to do. And so I, I did learn. It's like, but yeah, I was just all about the scene at first, but I'm still to this day a DEF CON fanboy. It's like I'm the DEF CON Group's global ambassador, not because it's a good title or it's a way for me to be a goon. It's because I believe in the message of DEF CON of, hey, weirdos, it's like you can come and be home here. It's like, and we're not going to judge you. It's like, and we're not going to say you don't fit in. It's like, even if we say we may not like what you do, it's like, there's still a place for you. And it's like, and that's the key thing. There are people here that I oppose, you know, uh, either politically or culturally, right? It's okay. It's like, because they're still part of my tribe. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting to hear that because it's like, it's true. It's this, you have this group here where it, Everyone is weird, and everyone's weird is accepted in yes. some form. It's not saying you have to, I, I don't necessarily have to uh, agree with everything you're saying. Right. I definitely don't have to agree with everything you say. Right. But at the same time, as I can talk to you as an equal, having that conversation. And what's yeah. great about it is in some ways it does feel like family. It's, we can beat each other over the head with a conversation. Look at any Thanksgiving, you know, it's like family can disagree. It's like family has no problem disagreeing with family. And one of the things that I love is how sometimes people will say to me about DEF CON, they'll say their complaint is, oh man, DEF CON's too big now. It's like, I love that one. It's like, cause they're like, oh yeah, but DEF CON, and I'm like, exactly. Aren't we lucky about that? Because yeah. you know why? You love Wi-Fi hacking. You can spend your whole entire life and whole entire weekend at the Wi-Fi hacking village. You like hardware hacking? It's like DEF CON is no longer just this one DEF CON. It's DEF CON is this meetup of all these different tribes in one spot. So all the tribes can meet and all the people can meet and understand that they're part of one major tribe, but with a little subsets. So you can spend all your time in the hardware hacking. DEF CON is big enough to house all these different tribes together. And it's like, and then bring these tribes in common areas so they literally mix and network. It's, it's nuts. I'm glad that it's, it's nuts. that big. And I would agree with you. It's, it's gotten huge. It's gotten, yes. like, so we did 49 videos last year. Yeah. Me and Gallery, 49 videos. In previous to that, I'd go, it's, it's big, but it's not that big. You can see everything. Right. 49 right. videos. We realized, Rick, we, there's, we even scratched the surface oh, on yeah. any of these. Like Blue Team Village. It's, it's talk after talk after talk. From Thursday to Sunday night, it's talks. Exactly. You can never leave that village and still have an awesome con and meet awesome yes. people. And I agree. What's also nuts is like, I didn't even know this was a thing until, and it might, I don't think it was the first year of it. There was the memorial. There's oh, the memorial yeah. village, Chantel, yeah. which was incredible, but it's like the family's gotten big enough yeah. where when someone passes away or whatever happens, like you have a place at DEF CON there. And that is like, it's grown very beyond. It's a quiet place, yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like, and they made it a very respectful place to do, yes. Oh yeah, they, like, they allowed us to do a video of it. Like it was, it was great to just to talk, yeah. talk through it, see what they did avail, available there. To be, 
again, to be, like, I think every one of us, when we get to DEF CON, it starts with, like, my, my early DEF CONs were a lot of talks, and then I yeah. found contests, and then I, I, I found Darknet, which was, like, friends. I got to meet there, and then eventually, like, one of the operatives to help run the contest, and then, like, I don't know, my story at DEF CON harkens back to, like, so my second year of college, I had uh, I had three other roommates, my my roommate, and then Bunny, who ended up who runs who used to run the Hardware Hacking Village. Right. And uh, my it was a room of two double beds. That was like the school is UAT, and my roommate was like World of Warcraft. Sucked me in for maybe a oh, month, yeah. and then here's Bunny sitting out in the the main like living room area, dorking around with hardware. And then you, you look at him, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I'm interested in network stuff and software, but, like, it's interesting. I'm going to hang out with you. And he introduced me to, like, uh, Lost and Ryan Clark, who was, who was a t teacher there, yeah. in which we formed Room 244, which was, like, our lab, our hangout. Yeah. We, found, we started finding our tribe. We all went to TourCon the first time, which was right. in California, and then uh, got pulled into DEF CON. And then that, they led me to... Uh, obviously, going to uh, DEF CON, and then that led me throughout DEF CON to Darknet. Darknet to a bigger part of, your to a bigger, bigger yeah. part of my drive. And then uh, that led me competing there to eventually doing, um, winning a black badge, which was amazing. But then I kept competing because I found my tribe. I found my tribe at Darknet, and I was like, at one point, Command Code pulls me aside. He's like, hey, dude, like, love you playing. But what are you doing? Like, you keep, right. and, and, and again, it, it sounds so arrogant. It was about yeah. the fun of being yeah. able to, to exercise your brain and being able to solve those. Because hackers love to solve yeah. their problems. Yeah, exactly. And it was like one of these things is like he eventually is like, like, you keep winning. Like, and, and, I, and this sounds like arrogant, but it's like, keep winning. But it's like, it was like, let someone else. It's like, dude, like, point me in any direction. Yeah. I'll go. Like, point me in any direction where I'll find these people, this community. And he's like, you know, you could like help staff it. And I was like, you also bring up a good point right there. And it was like, it didn't even occur to me. But then it was like, Darknet right. led me to meet another group. Right. And that group included Gulo and Gowrie, one of the people who run the podcast with me. Yeah. But at DEF CON 27, Joe Grand made a badge. No, I remember, yes. Yeah, the yeah. stone. The stone. Yes. And Gulo and Gowrie went off, and they wanted to do the forgery contest. Right. And they made the best forgery which they won with a urinal cake badge. Oh, no, I remember that. Yeah. I made a video from that, right. which was like the fir one of the first YouTube videos I did, and uh, ta talked about the badge and that. DEF CON then heard about that, that video, showed it, and then DEF CON reached out and said, hey, you did video there. Right. Why don't you come and do more video, but as a goon? Nice. Which led me to video. And then you know, leads me to the conversation with you for well. And that's what's about. It's about the conversation. People forget that's one of the biggest things that you get from DEF CON. It's not just listening to someone talk on a stage, but having a conversation about that talk afterwards in the hallway or in the chill out area or at a party or just you know just wherever, and being able to talk to other people and share that passion from what you learned and get someone else's take on it. It's like, I love it. It's, it's the communities. And, and then you have, as you said, you're, you're keynoting at the communities. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things I've always said about DEF CON is your goal when you come here, I believe your goal when you first come here, try and find your tribe. You will oh, have yeah. so much more fun at DEF CON yeah. after you find your tribe. And it might take years. Yes. But with DEF CON communities now, there's this whole idea of like, I have more opportunities right. to find my tribe. DEF CON has... It's gotten too big, yeah. but it's gotten so big where it's easier to find your tribe than ever before. Yeah. It's gotten big enough to have a big enough tent so all the other tribes can come together in one place every year. It's like, and know that there are gonna be people that are looking for their tribe and to give them a space. It's like, and that's the key thing. What, any more final thoughts? We've talked a lot and we've covered a lot of topics, yeah. but do you have any final thoughts, things we haven't covered or that you want to I would say one of my most final thoughts is one of the things that I always like to stress on, one of the things, especially when you're coming to, to DEF CON and you're coming to like any kind of new environment where you're like, you're unsure, or one of the other extremes when you've been here and you're an elder, stuff like that, hackers have the power to be anything. 
It's like, be kind. It's like, understand. It's like, that if you know all these things, people can ask stupid questions because they're asking questions in earnest. It's like, and if you don't know how to ask the question properly, at least you're trying to learn here. It's like, and if you're a noob, it's like never be intimidated about someone else's experience because every single person here either had to learn it themselves or the hard way. It's like, and if they did, they should be more than inclined to help others so they don't have to suffer that way. It's like, so be asking questions. Don't be afraid to be a noob. It's like, to, to, I'm still a noob in a lot of things. It's like, I still wear a shirt that says, hello, my, uh, my name is noob. It's like, because that's not a bad word. It's like, because that means you are starting out on a path because you're passionate about it and you want to learn. Wanting to learn should never be made fun of or chastised, especially at DEF CON. Especially when you're failing. You yeah. learn through failing. Like yeah. it's, it's kind of That's interesting too. Life. I'm a high school dropout and used to behind a dumpster. My whole life is learning from failure. It's like, and, and this whole environment, that's what we should be doing when we're asking those questions. It's like accepting that we, if we make a mistake on it. Well, it's, it's funny because like, I, I, so I have, I have two daughters and one's learning to tie her shoes. And it's awesome, and it's one of those things you truly recognize. You're like, I will, t I, for a very long time, I will be so much at, better at tying your shoes than you will be. Right. Like legitimately, I, I have been doing, but I have like 30, you know, I have, I've over 30 years experience yeah. tying my shoes, but the only way she's gonna learn is failure and yes. failure and failure. And we, we, at one point in our lives, we lose that ability to like, failure is how we learn. We're right. here, it is one of those things is like, you get, it isn't easy to get intimidated. Like, I'm not gonna ask this question because then it makes me, it, I might be like made fun of or something like that. And I do think at DEF CON, you get that more than anywhere else in the world yeah. is this ability, I'm gonna ask a question. I'm gonna be okay being wrong on it. And the one thing I will, I'll, I'll call it out is like, if someone is a complete jerk when you ask that question, like that's that person in the family who needs to be slapped upside yeah. the head a little bit. Because like, I, I think there's no, there should be no tolerance, especially here, like, it costs you, this is what baffles me. I have a business partner who's walking down the road. He said hi to someone, like, hey, how you doing? Like, he was walking down the, the sidewalk. He had to go out into the rain a little bit. And just like, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'll move out. And the person just walks up by without saying anything. Yeah. And, it, and I always laugh, my business partner, if you know him, he goes, he turns around and goes, it costs you nothing. Yeah. Just to say hi, and it's here of all places, it costs you nothing. I spend, I make it a point that I will at least five times, and I've already done it five times, over five times today, to point out, to compliment someone. I've complimented someone on their shoes, I've complimented on someone on their badge, I've complimented someone on their backpack. It's like, just to give out a random compliment for no other reason but that's just going to brighten their day. Oh, it's, it's absolutely. Costs you nothing. Costs you nothing. Exactly. And even like it, for DEF CON, again, you always have this FOMO, like if you're missing out, there's you're going to miss things. There's so yes. much going on at DEF CON. But to, like to take a minute and talk to someone about whatever they're passionate about, yes. like so, like get here at DEF CON more than anywhere else. Jason, as always, I love you dearly. Thank you so oh, much you. for talking. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And as always, hack on. Exactly.